When I was a kid, uh, my introduction to electrical circuits actually came through my dad buying a little kit. And the kit was uh, something I had in elementary school. And it involved, uh, he bought it from Radio Shack at the time. And so it was an electronics kit. And so what you did was each little kit had certain electronics projects you could do. Now, you don't want kids playing with a whole lot of dangerous electronic stuff. So what they did was each, the kit was made of a whole bunch of little plastic blocks. Each block had embedded in it a particular uh, electronic circuit element. So it have a circuit element, for example, that is going to be something like a resistor, another circuit element might be a capacitor, another circuit element might be inductor, or another circuit element might be just a thing where you screw a light bulb into and make lights turn on and off, and you know, all kind of different sort of things. Well, one of the uh, um, kit experiments that you could do was building a radio. Now, you could build a radio that did not need any external power supply, or you could build one that used an external power supply. The one without an external power supply was a crystal radio kit. And so when I uh, ended up going into uh, college, uh, I eventually ended up taking a public speaking class. And one of the, one of the uh, assignments was to have some kind of prop that you used that you explained. And so I chose to build a crystal radio and use that as my prop to explain how crystal radios work. And a crystal radio is a very simple sort of device, and I thought I'd give a chance to explain it to you as well. That you had a tank circuit. So your tank circuit was a capacitor and an inductor. Okay. And one end of it was connected to the ground. So that symbol there means connected to the ground. And the other end was connected to a long wire. That long wire was actually the antenna. And uh, what happened was that radio signals would come in. Uh, radio signals turn out to be electromagnetic radiation. And so it would send signals up and down here. Now, what would happen is for very low frequencies, then the signals would bleed out through the inductor. For very high frequencies, they would bleed out through the capacitor. Uh, but at the resonant frequency, then you'd maintain voltage. And so uh, to, to actually measure that, then what we had was a resistor that was connected up to a little speaker. Now, this was actually, at the time, it was just a little ear, earphone that you'd stick in there. Uh, now, to, to really do this right, though, you needed, and this was the part that made a crystal radio, you needed a diode in there. The diode only allowed electricity to flow in one direction. And so, uh, otherwise, the, the average would have been zero. So, it only flows in one direction through there. All right, so, and this was it. And this was the entire crystal radio kit. And then uh, I did a project uh, in college. Uh, I was expected to, I was taking a public speaking class and I, I did a, a, a project in which I was explaining how to build this and built one for, for the class. Uh, and so the way this works is you gotta have a capacitor, you gotta have an inductor. And so I actually made my own inductor by uh, coiling up a bunch of wire around an iron uh, uh, um, cylinder. And so let's say the inductor is equal to uh, 21.2 millihenries. Okay. And so the question is, what capacitance do you need to pick up a radio station? So now the thing is that the way this works is that the radio signal comes in, and as the signal comes in, then at the resonant frequency, it peaks. And so what you want to do is drive the speaker over here. The way you drive the speaker is that the radio station makes the signal bigger or smaller, uh, uh, and, and that change in current drives the diaphragm and the speaker back and forth, which makes sound. 
So that means we are modulating the amplitude of the signal. So this is AM radio. Now, to do FM radio, you're modulating the frequency. So now you make the frequency get longer and shorter. Now, that's going to be more complicated. You cannot actually pick up FM with a crystal radio uh, because you need to somehow convert the frequency modulation into an amplitude modulation in order to drive the speaker. So for this experiment, all I needed was to figure out what capacitance I needed. Well, I need to pick up an AM radio station. So I needed to pick something that was very strong. Well, in the DFW area, one of the strongest radio stations is 1080 uh, kilohertz. Okay, so 1080 kilohertz is going to be the frequency I want to go for. Now, the resonance is going to be the resonance of this tank part right there. And the tank part, you know, from before, has a resonant frequency that's 1 over 2 pi square root LC. So all I have to do is square both sides, 1 over 4 pi squared LC, and then I solve for C. So 1 over 4 pi squared uh, LF squared. So now I just plug in the numbers. The capacitance is going to be 1 divided by 4 pi squared uh, times the 21.2 times 10 to the minus 3 Henry's times 1080 times 10 to the third hertz. And so what you come up with from that is you come up with capacitance that's 1.02 times 10 to the minus 12 farads. So that's 1.02 picofarads. Now that's a tiny, tiny, tiny re capacitance. And in fact, that little bit of capacitance you can get by just having uh, some metal plates here that you uh, can over change the overlap with and that would change the amount of capacitance that you have and uh, usually you actually have more, more than just two plates here so so to do this and so that may, that means you could actually make your own capacitance doing this because uh, that's very little capacitance right there and then by adjusting the overlap you could actually adjust it to exactly what radio station that you wanted to listen to uh, but this is how you would build a crystal radio set